Okay, so I'm going to show you how I wired up the 12 volt system for this uh, 1952 Ford 8 inch tractor, which really can be done with just about any tractor that uh, is horizontal shaft that has a place where you can put an alternator on. Uh, this one, I took the old generator off and used the original bracket just to secure this alternator in. Uh, some tractors, they may be on the other side or they may be on top, but I'm not really sure. Uh, Ours is on the left hand side, uh, or the right hand side looking straight at it. Uh, I used a battery from the scrapyard. Uh, it has 590 cranking amps, which is, uh, you can use a lot more battery on this, but you know, it'll, it'll work either way. Um, basically, I took a wire and I went straight to the battery on the positive which you really need to go through your amp meter so you can tell if it's actually charging or not this wire this alternator is a Delco Remy 10SI that is or actually no it's not a 10SI it's a I'm not sure if it's a 10SI I think it's just a one wire uh, Delco alternator uh, which you can find at uh, some I've heard some people they get it they can go to advanced auto parts and just ask them for their cheapest alternator that they have and just tell them it's not for a car. Just tell them they just you just need a, a alternator, their cheapest alternator. So uh, all the all the wires that went to the generator, uh, you you can just really get rid of them. Basically, there was a regulator right here, a voltage regulator. You really don't need that. You can just throw it away or just keep it there. It doesn't really matter. But that has nothing associated with it. Just make sure that your alternator has a good ground and you should be good to go on that. Also, the other things that I did, you're gonna have to you might have to reverse your uh amp meter, otherwise you would get um it'll look like that. It it'll say that's charging when it's really discharging. So you might have to reverse your poles on there. And also what I did was, is I replaced a condenser, I don't really think you need to, I just did on this one because it probably needed to be replaced. Um, you'll need to get a 12 volt, uh, take your old ignition coil and take it to, uh, we took it to O'Reilly's, uh, that was the best place we could find. Um, and we got just a, just a standard uh, 12 volt coil that had the same fitting for that uh, plug, that uh, spark plug cable on and in the distributor we just changed out the condenser just in case but really I think it's just a capacitor so you really don't need to change it I don't think and I've heard that if since this was a positive ground tractor it had the positive as the ground we had to switch that over and then also we had a uh, don't use the same connections that you did on your coil. You need to change them over too. So basically, your positive needs to be um, your positive needs to go to the positive. Your negative needs to go to the negative. Not the negative needs to go to the positive, and the positive needs to go to the negative. Basically, saying that your positive will be on the ground because this used to be a, a positive ground uh, tractor. Now it's a negative ground tractor. So that's pretty much it. Uh, as far as the conversion, uh, some people that have the three wire alternators, they have to put a light somewhere and just uh, use it as like a charge light or something, or some kind of resistor or something in there that'll uh, just uh, trigger the alternator. Or the charge light just lets you know that it's not charging. Uh, some people, yeah, you can use a three-wire alternator. It's just that there's more wiring into it. You might want to look online. Uh, I forget what the one and two uh, wires go to. I think one is your I th one of the wires is your charge light. The other wire is your voltage sensing wire. Uh, and usually, uh, I think it's one that goes to your uh, positive terminal. But the positive thermal on this one, you just go straight to your battery. You don't have to even worry about it. So if it's a one wire alternator, kind of like a uh, lawn mower, a uh, riding mower, like a Briggs and Stratton with one wire coming off of the engine uh, to charge the battery. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the same concept. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. You also need to change everything else uh, hour meter, 
if it runs on electric or your lights, etc. Uh, nothing really else too much. Your starter you don't need to change because it, it'll just spin faster. And if it does ever blow, you might want to see if you can get a 12 volt starter. Um, it is spinning faster. It's not a bad thing. It's just you have to when you start it. It's going to be like this. You have to wait for that to stop spinning. Otherwise, you will burn up your. Um, I don't know you'll uh, grind the teeth off of your gear, your starter gear, and your solenoid. I wouldn't recommend pushing the button because if you push the button, it's going to do this. I mean, it will. I don't even want to demonstrate it because I got it stuck one time. Your switch will get stuck and it will just keep on trying to start the engine even while it's running. So you don't want to use that switch. It will probably stick and it can burn up your whole system or just short out your battery and tear up your gear and just do a lot of damage you really don't want to do. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I see most people, they eat... Uh, get those bracket kits for the alternators. I tried doing that but the only bracket I had didn't fit so I just decided to use the original bracket that was used to help hold it in place. I do need to tighten this up because it is coming a little bit loose but it's not falling off. So I mean so yeah. So yeah um, any comments, any questions, anything that I might be messed up on uh, just let me know, uh, send me a message or comment. So yeah, thanks for watching.